Okay, I'm going to get started. Um, this webinar is about maximizing green building uh, project ROI with CPACE financing and incentive programs. Um, um, just so you know who is presenting today, um, I'm Megan Saunders. I'm from Incentifind. I'm the commercial and CPACE national account lead. Um, we are based out of Houston, Texas. Um, Frank Slaughter from Clean Fund is also on the line. He is the regional managing director for Texas um, for Clean Fund. Um, and actually, Frank, if you want to, um, and I and I hope you can uh, join in. Um, I thought maybe this might be a good uh, place for you to discuss a little bit more about the partnership that Incentifind has with Clean Fund. Uh, terrific. Thank you, Megan. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to share some information with folks about Clean Fund and Incentifind. Um, we, we, we are working together. Um, obviously, Clean Fund and Incentifind are, are, are focused on the same um, area of real estate, if you will, and that's the clean energy aspect of real estate. You know, Clean Fund looks for partners uh, throughout the real estate industry from various levels, and Incentifying really struck us as being a very valuable partner, uh, not only for the work that we're doing, but for our clients. Um, you know, the, the, the relationship that we have with Incentifying, you know, creates for developers to not only leverage PACE financing for their project, but also to identify the, the, the myriad of other uh, types of incentives and rebates that are associated with utilizing clean energy aspects and, and, and focused on energy efficiency and water conservation and resiliency. So the, the partnership is one that we're, we're both aligned in many ways, and uh, we look forward to growing that relationship further. And, and of course, in introducing Incentifying uh, to as many folks as we can, just seeing the tremendous value that they bring to these, these opportunities and these projects. Great, thanks, Frank. Absolutely. So a little bit more um, about Incentifying, just so you can understand um, who we are and what kind of service we can provide to you as well. Um, so we're the only um, national database of green incentives that's recognized by the Department of Energy. Uh, there is no other database that has a comprehensive list of incentives that covers what we consider the triple bottom line, everything from energy efficiency to electric vehicles to economic development. And every year, approximately 1 million green projects are completed. And that's actually just based on the number of publicly reported projects. Um, yet there's approximately 10 billion, yes, that's billion with a B, incentives that go unclaimed every year um, that could help uh, to make these kinds of projects pencil. So our job um, as a database, um, we can assist you with those projects, whether they're new construction or existing buildings, um, with helping them find incentives and save money um, for work that um, oftentimes they're doing anyway on these projects. Um, so again, our database houses over 12,000 incentives and continues to grow every day. Um, we have incentives from uh, across the U United States, from federal, state, county, and city level government, as well as utility incentives. Um, in our database, you'll find everything from tax incentives to grants, rebates, fee waivers, uh, free assessments, bill credits, um, and many other incentives that promote a wide uh, range of green measures. Um, as you can say, see here, things like economic development, energy efficiency, water conservation, renewables, et cetera. Um, and, and our information, um, the way it's categorized in our database, reflects the way that commercial buildings are actually designed and upgraded, which is in a holistic manner rather than piece by piece. Uh, and there is no other database um, that shares that approach. So simply said, what Incentifying does is help to connect green projects to green incentives. And we do this by providing a detailed report that indicates all of the applicable incentives for your project and how they can impact your cash flow. Um, and this works really well for PACE projects, as Frank mentioned, um, who are pursuing these same kinds of energy and water conserving measures just by the nature of a PACE project. So how does our platform actually connect green projects to green incentives? We do this by working directly with anyone in the real estate industry. So you could be a contractor, a building owner, a property manager, um, and bring your project to us. And once you do, we have a three-step process. Step one is to do a free search on our website uh, for the incentives in your area. Um, if you find that you're in an area with a lot of incentives and you want to move forward and find the specific incentives applicable to your project, you would move on to step two 
which we call Verify. Um, there is a flat fee of $1,000 for a detailed Verify report. And this report is actually a curated list of incentives that includes their dollar value, specific to your project, and everything you're going to need to know to capture that incentive. Step three is actually an optional step. It's our apply step um, where you can have Incentifying help you apply for any of the applicable incentives for your project. Um, and I wanted to note that um, I've highlighted here that we feel confident that we can give you a 10x return on your investment in the form of incentives you can capture for your project. So um, we'll go over the three-step process in a little bit more detail just to make sure everyone um, understands how it works. So to start the search process, you must register an account on our website, which is incentifying.com, and fill out a 12-question survey about the project. The questions include basic things about a project that you would have, such as um, what is the project address, how old is the building, what kind of green measures are you pursuing, such as energy efficiency, water conservation, are you pursuing a program like LEED? Um, and this allows our database to look up the incentives that are specific to your project. Once the survey is completed, you can log back into your profile on our website and you'll see a list of all of the incentives um, based on the project's area um, that exists in our database. Um, this again lets you know, are you located in an area with robust incentive offering? Step two, our verify report. Um, this is to verify the eligibility of your project um, with the incentives in our database um, based on the specific characteristics of your project. So to obtain this more detailed report, you have to accept our terms and conditions on the website and make your payment online. Um, you'll then receive our report electronically, which provides a curated list of all the incentives for your project, including detailed information about the funding available, um, pertinent information such as is a specific contractor required to pursue this incentive, um, as well as things like the timeline. And uh, I will actually show you a more detailed example of exactly what this looks like for an incentive in just a little bit. Um, so again, our third step is optional called apply. Um, we'd be happy to help you apply for incentives for your project. Some people like to do it themselves and we're totally fine with that. Um, but this provides you detailed information about um, the process within our verify report. Each incentive you'll see has a fee listed um, in the report for us to apply for the incentive for you. And our apply dashboard um, integrated into our website um, seamlessly integrates with our database to uh, make the verifying, uh, make verifying your eligibility and applying for the incentives very quick and easy. So I'm going to pass it back off to Frank, um, who's going to go over a little bit more on the PACE side. Thank you, Megan. I appreciate that. Um, guys, this is Frank. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about PACE financing and give you a quick overview of what PACE looks like. Um, commercial PACE financing at CPACE is uh, property assessed clean energy, um, commercial property assessed clean energy, that is. It's a voluntary assessment financing, which is secured by parcel tax assessment and repaid via property taxes. Now, the, the key to that being, you know, as most people look at this, okay, you're saying, we're gonna increase property taxes, but what this is is a special assessment um, that doesn't really impact ad valorem taxes, but does attach to the property uh, as a, a special tax assessment. It is 20 to 30 year uh, fixed rate financing. The, the, the term is predicated on, on two things. Uh, the first is um, each state has a, a different uh, maximum term allowable. In some states it's 20, there are several states that allow 25, um, and of course, there are some states that allow up to 30 year financing for the improvements that are, um, that are performed on the real estate. The, the other aspect of that is, is that in most cases, there is a, an, an expected life of the improvements that are uh, performed. And, and sometimes the term will either be that maximum term um, or it will be the expected useful life of those components. Um, additionally, there are no loan agreements or covenants or guarantees associated with this project. Um, as well as the assessment does transfer with the property upon sale, which is a very key benefit to PACE financing. Um, PACE financing is used to finance qualified energy, um, water and seismic or resiliency related improvements 
uh, meaning that if you're performing an upgrade to a, a historic building and, and putting um, LED lighting into that project, or if you're utilizing low flow fixtures for that project, those are the types of items along with exterior windows, building envelope, um, a multitude of different aspects and improvements that can be uh, PACE eligible. Um, you can utilize PACE financing for those components. Legislation has been passed in 35 states and including the District of Columbia. Right now, 24 states have active programs. And, and what does that mean? So PACE financing, because it is assessment financing, the states actually have to opt into or pass legislation allowing property owners to utilize PACE financing very similar to the jurisdictions like the cities and the counties that can utilize this assessment financing to improve roads or sidewalks, et cetera. So it's an adjustment in that legislation that allows PACE to be available within that state. Secondly, it's a city and a county within that state that would then have to opt into that program. And right now there are 24 states with active CPRACE programs where deals have been funded utilizing the assessment financing. And then, of course, commercial pace rolling out nationwide. In 2019, um, we're expected to launch additional locations. Uh, the city of New York is expected to be active by the end of the summer, early fall. Um, Chicago is currently active uh, right now, so there, a deal has not been funded in Chicago at this point, but pace is available there. Um, Boston, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania, both states. Uh, Pennsylvania has recently passed their legislation, and it's looking like the end of the summer for the city of Philadelphia and the county of Philadelphia to be active as well. Okay, and I go back into a little bit of what qualifies for commercial pace financing. You know, commercial pace financing can be used for, again, a multitude of improvements, but the other side to that equation is, is that pace financing can be performed with no money up front, because we can also roll in both the hard and soft costs into the PACE financing component. So, so what does that mean? So the different property types, office, retail, industrial, hospitality is a really key sector right now as well, uh, multifamily, manufacturing, healthcare facilities, and of course, non-public schools. So if you have private schools, private university can leverage PACE financing to improve their projects and their property. Um, and of course, the eligible improvements. We can look at solar systems and energy storage, um, HVAC systems, lighting and building controls. Um, of course, building envelope and windows, as I mentioned previously, down to cool roof systems, water conservation measures, and of course, as I mentioned before, the soft costs that are associated with the project. And of course, one of the key areas that a lot of people will overlook is the irrigation um, you know, and controls for you know, specific properties. And, and I think that's going to be a key component going forward for PACE financing. But more importantly, the one thing to remember is this. As technology advances and as, as buildings become more energy efficient and more focused on water conservation, there may be additional measures that come into play that may be qualified for PACE financing. So we would certainly be willing to engage in the discussion about any new technologies where we may be able to qualify them. I'll go back again to talk about the statement of qualifications. You know, obviously, CPACE is growing very rapidly. Um, we're, we're looking at approximately 100% per year growth. Um, and of course, we're coming up on uh, about a billion dollars of annual origination. And, and that's really a focus for Clean Fund right now. Uh, we are a direct lender of CPACE financing, and we do originate our own deals. So we're, we're not a broker. Um, and of course, some of the advantages. Uh, we have a team of professionals founded in 2009. Uh, Clean Fund was one of the very first CPACE focused companies and consists of a vertically integrated um, and experienced team with securitization experience. And I think that's going to be very important. You know, you want, a, you want a company that has a history of successful closings, and that is something that Clean Fund definitely has a history of. And of course, execution. You know, we funded 80 plus projects in eight states so far and are rapidly growing. Um, Clean Fund has closed the most in the industry in terms of total uh, dollar amount on the commercial side uh, for the securitization. Uh, we had the, the industry's very first 144A securitization last year, and of course that, that, that's a big uh, milestone, if you will, for the PACE industry. Uh, we are a capital provider, as I mentioned, a direct lender, not a broker, so we don't have to go out and look for capital. Um, and our backing is by one of the top 10 construction lenders 
uh, private equity insurance and asset management companies in the country. So we, we have a lot of backing with regard to, and the ability to fund projects as small, or I say as small, typically our project range is somewhere around a million dollars on the low side, but we're not really capped on the upper end of that spectrum. So the, uh, the idea being we, we have the support and the capital available. Um, and of course, uh, program expertise, and that's going to be key. We have great governmental relationships and, and have worked in supporting the local administrators around the country in developing their programs. And, and that's going to be key. Those, the development of those programs allows us that unique knowledge of what we can and cannot accomplish within the program and within the statute rules. And that's going to be key to the funding of those programs. And then, of course, lastly, Clean Fund excels at creative capital solutions and, you know, for complex financing transactions. We want to be nimble and we want to be able to um, support our clientele in the way that they need to be supported. So flexibility is going to be a key uh, in, in being, uh, you know, that group that can support and provide financing for complex transactions. Well, why don't we go ahead and uh, move Megan into an example and I'll start out. And, I'm, and I'll just talk a little bit about a project. And this is a project that Clean Fund uh, funded in the state of Texas. Um, it is the historic Butler Brothers building in Dallas, Texas. Um, it was a historic building, vacant downtown, um, existing renovation. Uh, there, it was a $24 million commercial PACE loan that was provided on that project. And, and of course, the historic mixed-use aspect of it now well, it's this old historic building. Today, it is a dual-branded Marriott Brand Hotel with uh, existing multifamily and some retail. Uh, the overall size was over half a million square feet. As I mentioned, it is in Dallas, Texas. And of course, the scope of work on that project ranged anywhere from the energy efficient aspects uh, for HVAC, lighting, uh, insulation, roofing, glazing, of course, exterior waterproofing, plaster, and of course, plumbing and irrigation measures that were associated with the improvement of that building. Here's some pictures of the project, of course, the exterior of the building. Um, it's important to also recognize that uh, this project was the winner of the Sustainability Leadership Award um, for the black, white, and silver. And it's an, it was a great honor, and, and more importantly, this project really, really turned out to be a great project um, to really kind of revitalize and provide some opportunities in downtown Dallas uh, for some growth. What you see here is a, an example of a capital stack comparison. And this is a, a good representation of not only this project, but of other projects where PACE financing has been able to come in and become a part of that, that capital stack. And, and what you're going to see is the before PACE on the left, where the senior debt, which was EB5, um, was at six and a quarter percent, and of course on the right after pace that remained the same, as did the amount of senior debt. Um, you've also got roughly three percent of at, at three percent the historic tax credits of roughly twenty two million dollars, and of course that remained the same. Now where it gets interesting is if you look at the amount of capital that was able to be provided, and you know, you've got the mezzanine loan at twenty three point nine million, and you've got the pace financing at twenty three point nine with a significant difference in the interest rate. The overall 15% MES loan rate versus the 6.13% uh, PACE interest rate made a significant impact. You see the equity remain the same as well. And what's really key here is the weighted average cost of capital came down almost two full percentage points um, in this process. And, and that's very key for some developers. You know, as we've seen in the, in the past, you know, six to 12 months, you know, senior lenders are lending less and less. And so the, the, the viability of these projects can sometimes be predicated on uh, the additional or alternative financing measures between mezzanine or pref equity. And PACE can be a very large uh, competitor in that arena to make these projects even more viable. Okay, great. Thanks, Frank. So for this, re, uh, for this project using Incentifine's database, our team identified almost $500,000 in incentive, incentives that they could take advantage of. Um, there were a variety of incentives, including utility, city, state, and federal. Um, and actually what you can see on your screen here uh, is what our Verify report actually looks like. Um, this is actually a screen capture from uh, our website. 
And you can notice this is actually a summary table from that report and the information um, that you would be provided on, on your project as well. But it gives you everything from the type of incentive. Um, so it gives you the incentive name and then the type. So you can see, is it a rebate or a tax incentive or a grant? Um, is it related to um, different aspects of your scope like energy efficiency, water conservation or renewables? And then it gives you a sense of the range of dollar val value available for that um, incentive. This is just a second um, page uh, list of the incentives. So we identified a total of 18 incentives for uh, this project um, and reviewed the report to determine which made sense to apply for. And I'll go into that in just a second. Um, this report um, is actually delivered similar to the search results on your profile. It exists in an HTML format that can be shared with project teams uh, for up to two years. Uh, we understand that sometimes projects go on hold or take longer to get off the ground than expected. Um, so we make sure that you have access to the most up-to-date incentive information um, that, that applies to your pro project. So if an incentive goes away or funding is depleted, you get up-to-date informa information about those specific incentives to your project. Um, so I mentioned um, some more detailed um, information on the incentives. So within your Verify report, you'll get this level of information on, on each and every incentive that's listed in that report. So you can see this is just an example um, of one of the retail energy providers incentive program. Uh, the first column contains a, a link to the actual program. Uh, the second includes the eligible scope, um, so what, what type of um, energy efficiency measure would apply for this. Um, we give you a sense of the minimum and maximum funding provided by this specific incentive. And then um, the estimated time to apply, if there's anything you need to know, like is there a preferred contractor, is an audit required? Um, this is particularly important for renovation projects where oftentimes you'll need to have um, the organization come out and actually inspect um, what was uh, included in the building before it gets renovated. Um, and then next steps on how to actually capture the incentive. Um, you know, it gives you information on what kind of website you have to go to, how do you schedule an assessment if that's required. And then finally, for our apply services, if you don't want to go through those next steps and you'd like us to do it for you, we include a cost to apply. And what I wanted to make sure to mention here that um, we do not uh, take any of um, the money up front for that. Essentially, we would help you apply for the incentive. And at the end, when you actually receive the incentive, then we take a percentage um, of that incentive or rebate. Um, so nothing is due to us up front. And so for the apply services, um, looking at the incentives that this project was available for, just to give you a sense of what they actually um, could go after and pursue um, and their timeline, um, you can see that many of the incentives that were identified were received in year one of the project, essentially after the install took place. Um, and then information about how much funding uh, was expected to be provided. So just as an example, the first one, the utility rebate was for an energy efficiency measure. Um, that could be captured in year one after the install and the estimated funding was $124,000 um, after the installation. Um, as a total for, for this project, the rebates came to $347,000 and the tax incentives came to $102,000 for a total of $449,000 in incentives for this project. Um, and again, for our apply services, we provide a white glove service um, through our apply dashboard on our website. It tracks everything from the estimate all the way to the actual um, incentive that will be received for the project. And we provide clear communication along the way with updates on where we are in the process to make sure um, that you can, can track your incentive. Um, Frank, I just wanted to see if there's anything you wanted to add here about how these numbers play into your cash flow. Yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate that, Megan. You know, one of the key components to PACE financing oftentimes is identifying uh, savings to investment ratios. There, there are a number of states, you know, as we talked about 35 states, 25 active programs, but a number of the states have a savings to investment ratio that's required to be proved up where your savings to cost is greater than one, meaning essentially your PACE financing 
um, would be more than covered annually, that PACE assessment would be covered by the actual savings associated with the project. And this type of savings, these rebates, and of course these tax incentives, can typically be rolled into the, the, save, the overall savings number to ensure that that savings to investment ratio is achieved. And that, number one, as a key qualifier within those states, that's the, probably one of the most important factors that we face is being able to prove up that savings to investment ratio. So the incentive finds program and their provide services, and of course the, the rebates and tax savings they, they can identify go a long way to supporting clean fund and the effort to utilize PACE financing. Great, thanks. Um, you wanna take it away for the second case study as well? Absolutely. You know, example two is a, is a current project for me um, and it's a project that is considering PACE financing right now. And I think it's a very uh, great opportunity to look at from the beginning when you're looking at developing a project or going in and doing the renovation of an existing building, how important incentivizing and, and the services that you provide can be to qualifying PACE financing on the project. So the, the Lewis B. Mayer building in Los Angeles, it's an existing building uh, that is looking at doing a renovation of about $4 million. Um, it is commercial mixed use. Uh, about 35,000 square feet, and you know the scope of work will be energy efficiency, renewables, um, as well as potentially some seismic upgrade. And as you can see, this is a, an historic building, and so when when focused on the improvements to that real estate, identifying those measures internally, to which there will probably be a significant number that are PACE eligible, is going to be the most key aspect of this. Now again, I'm, I'm, the, the incentive fine process on this um, is going to identify those, those tax rebates uh, and, and tax incentives that, that will be available that may help qualify this project for PACE financing and make it a more friendly environment for the, the developer. Megan? Yeah, so we actually ran our report on this project just to see um, what kind of incentives we might be able to um, get for the owner. And so we identified 19 incentives for this project. Um, since it is in California, there happen to be a lot more uh, utility programs available, as you'll see on the screen. Um, one thing I wanted to note here is that you can see in the columns um, for the cost um, applicable or the savings applicable to these incentives, um, a lot of them say other. And I just wanted to clarify that the reason for that is many of these programs are based on um, the KWH savings um, or specific measures to a project. And so they can be automatically calculated without getting further details um, on the project. And so once we have that, um, information about a project and what actually um, you're installing. Is it LEDs? Are you doing um, a whole building retrofit of energy efficiency measures? Um, you can get a better sense of what that actual dollar amount would be for your project. Um, so again, these are just more incentives we identified. Um, I wanted to point out that several of these, um, especially some of the federal ones, the tax related incentives, we do provide information um, on our verify report on experts across the country who can help you obtain these incentives. So we have an opportunity zone expert and people who work solely um, on the federal government tax deductions and credits who we can refer you to um, to help you capture these incentives. Um, so again, you know, just looking at what we thought this project might be able to actually apply for, um, we came up with about $148,000 um, in rebates. This is, a, this is a smaller project than the one we looked at before. Um, so again, it's a variety of utility rebates and bill credits, um, and as well as uh, gas and water conservation measures. Um, this project, we assumed um, on the renewable side that the renewables contractor um, was going after some of those um, rebates that were specific to solar, uh, but they certainly do exist for this project. Hey, Megan, just yeah. as, a, as, a, as a side here, you know, on this type of project, I mean, it's a smaller, uh, you know, project for PACE financing, call it a $4 million renovation. You know, what, so what you're saying is, is if this were, call it a $40 million gut rehab of a building, you know, similar to kind of a gut rehab in Dallas, that the amount of rebates and tax dollars that are potential for savings would likely increase. Yes, that's right. We assume that because this is a smaller um, building and, and the smaller loan amount, essentially, you know, a smaller scope, um, 
that the incentives were, were not to the same scale as, for instance, um, the Dallas project that we looked at. Terrific. Thank you. Sure. And I think that's it on, on our side. Frank, feel free to add anything. And if not, um, we'll get into the Q&A. Um, I'm going to check to see what kind of questions we have. Um, and so just give me a second. Okay, um, I think I'll start here. So um, one of the questions we had was, let's see, who actually pays for the verify report um, if you go through with that process with incentivized? Um, and actually, I guess I can answer that one um, because that one does come from me. So. Uh, the Verify report is typically paid by, um, usually from our side, if it's not coming through Clean Fund, it's paid by, um, you know, typically the owner or whoever comes to our database. Um, but I would say when we're working with Clean Fund, it comes from whoever is taking out the PACE loan, um, which I guess is, is typically the owner, and Frank, feel free to correct me. But the cost of the report can actually be rolled into the CPACE loan because it's considered an eligible cost for PACE. Um, so you can actually purchase a Verify report and then include it as part of your CPACE loan. Yeah, hi Megan, this is Frank. And, and just to confirm that, you know, we have looked at a couple of projects with uh, Incentifying in Texas and, and of course the administrators of the program in Texas have indicated that this would be a soft cost that is eligible to be rolled into uh, the PACE financing. So I just wanted to make sure to point that out that in the state of Texas specifically, uh, it, it can definitely be rolled in. And I would certainly identify this as one of those soft costs that we spoke about earlier where, you know, it could potentially be rolled into the PACE financing um, through that process. Okay, great. Do you want to take one of the next questions? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think one of the questions that I see here is, is how will I know if my project is right for incentives? And, and, I, and I think that's probably a great uh, question uh, for you. You know, how would someone, you know, know whether or not that, you know, their project would qualify for these incentives or, or maybe more importantly, should they? Or is that something that incentivizing should be looked at as being the expertise in that field? Yeah, it's interesting. We get that question a lot. Um, but we find that most projects are eligible for incentives. Um, I think we've literally had one case where we found um, that the project just, you know, couldn't qualify and it was based on the size of their scope and their location. Um, so most projects, um, we say, come to us if you're looking for an incentive um, at any time. Um, one thing I would say to caveat there is certainly for renovations, um, you'll capture more if you if you have us um, early on in the process. Um, like I said, oftentimes the utility rebates, they make sure that you actually, um, they can actually see what was in the building prior um, to give you an assessment of what their incentive might be. So earlier is better, um, but there's usually still an opportunity. And as I mentioned before, we feel pretty confident um, that we can find incentives in the amount of 10, uh, 10 times the cost of our report, that $1,000 report, um, or we won't move forward with the project with you. Hey, Megan, in that instance, you know, if, you know once somebody identifies and comes to you and, and, and you say, yes, this project has some incentives, you know, what happens after the Verify report is purchased and, and who should they be touching base with? I mean, clean fund, incentivizing, you know, there's a partnership. I mean, my perspective would be incentivizing. Can you maybe talk to that a little bit? Yeah, exactly. So once you once you go ahead and um, indicate online that you want to purchase the Verify report, you'll get a, um, an email from us right away saying, um, let's schedule a call to talk about your project. Um, we will actually have a one-on-one -on -one call just to get a little bit more details, make sure that there's nothing else specific about your project that we need to know. Um, and then um, the actual um, uh, getting the, the verify report in your hands usually takes up to two weeks. It depends on the location. Um, but up to two weeks later, you'll get um, a link to that report uh, via email. And then at that point, we'll schedule another call to go through all of the incentives to make sure that you and your team, if you decide um, to include them on that, um, understand each of the incentives, how to apply for them, and any other specific information you need to know. 
Hey, and uh, Megan, this is Frank again. Um, and, and in that process, what, what if the scope changes? You know, what, what if they're, you know, when they apply for the incentives and they say, okay, well, there really are a lot of incentives here. You know, what, what, what is, what, with the scope changes, what is the typical process there? Yeah, you can certainly come back to us. The nice thing about our partnership with Clean Fund is um, the way that the reports um, are, are completed, it essentially covers the entire scope of the project. So if you originally think, okay, we're just going to do energy efficiency, and, um, you know, we complete your verify report based on that, and then you have, you come back, you know, you're, you're, further along in your project and you realize, oh, we're going to do some water conservation measures because they just make sense. You know, we can get some great payback on them. Um, we can certainly update your report and add those incentives for you. So we definitely have that flexibility. That's terrific. And I, and I think the last piece here, I, I think it's the last one I see, and, it, and I think you've already answered this question in the presentation. It says, does incentivizing actually help me apply for the incentives? And, and I think that you mentioned yes, and I think that's a probably a great way for, at least in terms of answers, you know, to reiterate that, you know, you guys are really, you know, soup to nuts, if you will. It's from the beginning to the end of the process with incentives, you can really help these developers in, in every way possible. Exactly. Yeah, I mentioned we have sort of a white glove service for the apply uh, for the incentives. Um, you know, sometimes people like doing it themselves, but there's a lot of people out there that just say, take this off my plate. You know, we want the money. Um, we certainly want to move forward with the incentives, but we just don't have the time um, to go through the process to, you know, give all the information with, to the utility. And so we can definitely do that um, for any of the incentives um, that we would provide in the verify report. That's terrific. That's terrific. Well, wonderful. Thanks for that. Yeah, and I don't see anything else. Um, I'll pause for just a minute, just in case someone pops back up. But um, I just want to say thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Um, I appreciate that everyone uh, could be here today, especially with our slight hiccup with the technology problem. Um, I will take the blame for that. Um, I'm definitely not um, a tech guru over here, for, so thanks for bearing with me. Um, and thanks again, Frank, um, for being here today. Um, it's good to be able to share our partnership with Clean Fund uh, with all the participants. Well, Megan, the, the, the feeling is mutual and uh, we're, we're Clean Fund is very happy to be partnering with Incentifying on this and look forward to many opportunities to provide both those rebates and the tax incentives to the folks that we're working with on PACE financing and, of course, supporting your clients um, in their research and identifying as to whether PACE is an option for them on their projects as well. So thank you. Great. Thanks so much, and thanks, everyone.